Oh, yes. Let me grab mine. Oh my God, is this part of Blood and Ash? Yes. I'm going to have to peace out because I haven't read this. Spoiler free. Okay, nice butt, Madeline. <laughs> okay, do you want to just do the first two in the series? Because I can't keep them separate. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Do you want to kick me off when you do spoilers or are you going to do completely spoiler free? I think we can just do spoiler free. Is that fine? Yeah. Mm hmm whatever you want okay we're talking about a light in the flame and a shadow in the ember which are is the prequel cities to blood and ash uh it's a trilogy so two books are out right now the third is coming out in october yeah i think it was october and november yeah huge shout out to jennifer armentrout who is releasing like three books this year and that makes me really happy. I wish all authors would write books faster and release them faster. <laughs> but, uh, this, I have read this a long time ago, like probably two months ago. I kind of forget what it's all, like, can you do the synopsis? <laughs> oh my God, I'm trying to remember. I should have looked this one up. I yeah, I read it. The so there's this really pretty girl. And she's like a peasant, doesn't have powers. And then she meets this hot guy with dark hair. And it turns out she's the most powerful being in all of history. And they fall in love. So it's like, I mean, you're, not, pretty... you're not wrong. <laughs> it's like the synopsis for like every fantasy book ever written. Um, we haven't done the, we haven't done the first one, have we? No. Mm. What so is she's the main like... girl's name? That's what I'm trying to find. Oh. Um... Because and Sarah Fina Sarah Fina okay yeah well I don't so she's living in a different realm than him right yeah she's living in a different realm and then she sees a murder by these they're gods right yes yeah and so she is like trying to sneak up and find out like why they murdered this family and she does I don't think she realizes how powerful they are because she's just gonna like attack them mm -hmm. and then this man grabs her and like stops her from attacking them and then they go they decide that they're going to figure this out together right yeah and then their paths just kind of keep crossing. Um, yeah, and so she's like, she is a veil, right? Like she, she was a promised consort to hell. So she lives in this castle with her brother and sister. And they're step she's siblings. just waiting, step siblings. And so they're, she's basically waiting for the devil or Hades to come get her and take her back and then there's this blight that's like coming across the land and sh the whole world or realm whatever believes that once he comes and gets her then that will be stopped and so basically he comes decides not to take her and leaves her and then she like blames the whole thing on herself and then like tries to go through like figuring out what it the blight is and how to stop it or trying to find the devil and like ask why he didn't want her mm -hmm. yeah she was kind of like the solution to all their problems like she was going to cure like the curse of the land um and then he turned her down and she hit the fan yeah so it follows her story as kind of being like in the royal house, but also outcast from the royal house because everyone blames her then that he didn't choose her. And so yeah. then it's kind of like years later and her story, she just kind of has gone from caring um, and being like this good little princess to being like, fuck it, I don't care. Yeah. She a good main character. She is a good main character. I really liked her. Mm -hmm. I really liked the other main character, uh, which I don't know if it's a spoiler to say who it is, but um, the devil. Yeah, the devil, the king, the ruler of the like 80s yeah. underworld. Yeah. 
I would say that the writing's really good in this one. Um, these first two are ones you can you can honestly binge read. I rated these a solid A. I would highly recommend them. But I will say it's kind of like a double-edged sword because you have to read these to understand Blood and Ash. But Blood and Ash would be more of like a BB plus for me. Yeah, I would agree so. too. I gave blood and ash b plus but these i gave a plus mm -hmm. they're I really just like out. yeah i like the main characters in these better like blood and ash i'm just like rolling my eyes a lot because i'm like oh my god again but these ones were like way better to me oh my gosh there are just some scenes in blood and ash that don't need to be there like they have sex way too much honestly it's like just <laughs> calm it down you yeah. there are some it's just a war yeah, like there are some scenes that you could literally just cut out of that book that don't need to be there because it doesn't add anything. Is it like Silver Flames level where it's like? I would say it's yeah. more raunchy than Silver Flames. I would say on a spice level, Silver Flames is like a three chilies, and these are like four to five, in my opinion. It's okay. So I yeah. feel like Silver Flames is like the most aggressive one I've read, but this Blood and Ash is like a step up. Blood and Ash. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Blood and Ash is yeah way way <laughs> different <laughs> but it, like it's just so like, i'm like why <laughs> yes that's the thing like, like why? there are some i really like when stories have like a really great plot and they're like twist and turn kind of like kingdom of the wicked like the plot is there the storyline is great and then you add some spice to it and it just levels it up in yeah. blood and ash sometimes it seems like the spice is the main thing and then the story is on the back burner yeah and i just like wait they're having sex again like why <laughs> they just got done <laughs> who are these people they don't even they don't even know each other <laughs> no yeah. yeah i feel like the flesh and fire series which is shadow and the ember and light and the flame i feel like was much better um like per the plot and the main characters were better like i don't know do you think that someone would need to read Blood and Ash first, or could they actually read this as a prequel and then read Blood and Ash? Uh, I would read that. I would read the Flesh and Fire series first. I wish I had read it first, just because then when you like catch glimpses of the characters in Blood and Ash, you would know more what like they're talking about. Yes, that's true, because especially when in the blood and ash series they go and see some people and uh like who are sleeping uh i think that moment would be more powerful yeah because like he says some things and like if you've never read the flesh and fire series you would have no idea what he's talking about like yeah. it wouldn't make sense but when i read it i started laughing mm -hmm. and that like it just made more sense but i think i mean i guess you could read them in either order but i think it I wish I would have read them first before Blood and Ash. October and November? So I could yeah, read all three of these first before going on. Yeah. I but would. Blood and Ash is not done, so you can't read that list. But you know. the next one's coming out this year. So maybe, yeah. like, or is it a six book series? Because right now there's four out. No, there's four? Yeah. There's uh, Blood and Ash, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, The Crown of Gilded Bones, and The War of Two Queens. And, yeah, so we have four. It's either at least one or two more. Yeah, I thought there were two more, but I don't know. It's I'm pretty sure one book been. that's coming out this year is more of a novella, but I'm not 100% sure. That would make sense if they're going to finish uh, the Flesh and Fire series. Yeah. I guess we'll see. I'm but, excited. This series sounds good. It is good. Do you guys think is this series better than Kingdom of the Wicked? Or is Kingdom I of the Wicked I like it better than Akatar. No. You, you wait, like you like Blood and Ash better than Akatar? No. The Flesh and Fire series I like better than Akatar. Those are big words. Um, I know. It's really close, though. Like, really close. I don't know if I could say I liked it. It's hard. I think I need to know the ending first. 
I think the, the plot of Act God. Heart. Hmm? I think the plot of Act Heart is good too. It might be okay, the plot of Act Heart might be like one percent better. I don't know. It's hard to pick. They're very similar. I'm so excited. I'm torn. They're super comparable to me. But I would say I like for sure like Akatar better than Blood and Ash. Yeah. Oh yeah. That is Blood and Ash is. Yeah. So where does Crescent City fall? Is it below Blood and Ash? Or like we need like a leaderboard of like fantasy books. Blood and Ash just didn't have that great of a plot. Like Crescent City has a better plot. Have you read Crescent City, Liz? Yeah, I've read both of them now. We should do that review. We totally should. Yeah, guys. That one, that one's different than the other ones. Like, even Throne of Glass, because it's, like, completely different world. Like, they have phones, and I don't know. I like that better than Blood and Ash, too. Mm -hmm. And I like, I love how SJM's stories overlap. Uh, like intertwine that's really cool to me yeah I feel like she puts a lot of time into like creating the easter eggs and things you find in the different worlds like Splash the... and Fire doesn't do that really I mean there people are mentioned in Blood and Ash but they're not like different worlds coming together or anything it's really a true like prequel and then series but there aren't like a secret in like interwoven things that you never would have guessed that like make a big impact like Sarah J Moss does there are some things but not like crazy that you would like gasp and be like oh my gosh yeah. like you look at what you're like oh my god there's they were married the beef that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well did I need to put the stuff on top and put it back in no it just you just need to take the pizza out okay put the yeah. toppings on and then cut but then Good. did you put the pepperoni in yeah it's all done okay Thanks, Rob. So I guess my dinner is ready. Um, I prepped it all, though. He just put it in the oven, in case you were wondering. But that's Blood and Ash, or not Blood and Ash. A Shadow in the Ember and Light in the Flame. Highly recommend. It's an A for sure. And better than Blood and Ash, but you kind of have to read both. And Andrea says it's better than Akatar. She did. Know, it's hard to decide. I did say that. They're like, I don't know. I I really I love mean, the ghost in this story. Like, yeah. So. Total rice and vibes though. Like they're similar. Like witty, funny. I don't know. Good. There can't be anything dark. better than rice and though. I don't think. I don't know. Yeah, dark. Mm -hmm. I like that. I'm excited to read these. Thanks, guys. Yeah. You're welcome. You'll have to tell us which one you like better. Akatar. Oh, I'm scared. Flesh in the fire. All right. I'll let you know. Oh, I did binge these. Now I'm thinking I binge read these. Mm -hmm. Like, let me just check. These might be 12-9. Okay, yes. I read these, like, four days apart. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um... Those are definitely A plus <laughs> reads. And I would highly yeah. and they I would say they're for sure comparable, if not yeah. better than Akatar. They're at least equal to Akatar in yeah. my mind. For sure. Um, 